When schools were given control of their own budget, head teachers were suddenly responsible for millions of pounds every year. Today, finance is a critical and often difficult part of the job. At Gospel Oak School in London, head teacher Alan Seymour has a dilemma. He wants to cover 10% of the non-contact time for his staff by employing a full-time music teacher, but he simply cannot afford it. I don't think it's my job to be going out raising money. Uh, my job is about teaching and learning, and I need to be in my school making sure the teaching and learning is getting better. Business guru Fiona Eldridge has a wealth of experience both in education and business. It's a combination that serves her well as the chair of Top Supply Agency, Teaching Personnel. I joined Teaching Personnel as their chairman, and my role there is to help them balance um, education and business, and to ensure that everything that the company does is grounded within uh, an educational background, uh, but obviously also things like financial performance of the company and so on. Fiona has agreed to come to Gospel Oak and cast her expert eye over the finances. We do have some budget issues here. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it's the main issue. We are going to have real problems in, in giving people 10% more no contact right. time next year. Uh, and I'm very interested in talking that through sure. to see whether you might have some ideas about how we could achieve that. Uh, or whether you think, like we probably do, that it isn't possible. What, what I'm aiming to, to get out of it is, is really to look at how some of the experience that I have in terms of running large companies can perhaps assist you. I weigh out everything up in terms of what is this going to do in terms of impacting on teaching and learning. And if I don't think that it's going to uh, have a positive impact, I don't do it. So I very rarely go out to meetings. <laughs> and the reason you're here today is because I'm hoping that you're going to uh, solve my budget problem and have <laughs> some uh, indirect <laughs> uh, influence yeah. on raising standards. Fiona's first task is to get to grips with the budget, so she meets with school finance manager Susie Penny. Apart from staffing, what, what would you say is your biggest cost area? I, I suppose it is the is rates, water, gas, yeah. electricity. I mean, for both gas and electricity, we're in a big contract. Our gas bill, however, is just going up by 53% as from the 1st of September. Are you tied into British gas in some way? Or? No, but I think that it's a, it's a three-year contract. Right. So it's, you know, it was renegotiated and it's gone up, so we've got to find an extra £5,000 a year. There are savings that we could make, I'm sure, if, um, you know, if somebody stood over the photocopier um, all day long and said, are you sure you really want six copies, would three be enough? Yeah. Um, or, you know, things like that. I'm sure we could mm -hmm. cut down on photocopy. I think we spend about £7,000 a year. Right. It's a lot of money. Fiona is also interested to find out what use the school makes of its premises. We let the school, we've got a, a regular Sunday booking to a local um, drama school. We've in the past had um, dance clubs, mm -hmm. the after school sort of ballet classes and yoga classes. We, we charge more or less £30 an hour right. at the moment. Right. Um, and uh, we can, the, the market is unlikely to bear very much more of that, mm -hmm. more than that. And we, you know, we make a profit with that. You can always do a separate thing at lunchtime. Fiona gets Alan to show her round the school so she can judge how resources are being spent for herself. <laughs> what kind of nouns did we say it was? Right, on we go. Can you remind me of the sliding that you gave? Because the gay is using the side of her body. Sure Start gave us a substantial amount of money. I think it was about £10,000 to, to replace this and put in for features like that. So that's that, that safety... Uh, the safety surface. Stuff, yeah. So we're not doing badly, are we? In terms of... The nursery is a, a, an excellent resource and uh, I think they don't actually use it during the, the summer holidays. Um, we're very short of working space for, for visiting professionals and right. for... Um, teaching assistants and so on. Mm -hmm. 
that's somewhere in the region of 90 to 95 percent of the budget is already occupied by staff so there is perhaps only a small area which we can look at in terms of redeployment of funding the other year three plus who are currently some of them out doing the treasure hunt yeah in terms of Alan's situation, I, mean, I think he's built a, a very strong school and he's really um, very intent on ensuring that he raises the standards of teaching and learning. Now within that context, obviously there is quite a, a strain on his budget and the current situation is that by September 2005 he will need to find 10% planning, preparation and assessment time for each of his permanent members of staff. So in order to release that time, his ideal solution is to be able to appoint a, a new member of staff who will look at music activities for the school. Sadly, his budget doesn't stretch to that, so the challenge is very much how he can actually provide that teacher, which is his preferred solution. So what are Fiona's first thoughts about the school? Now, I know the school's been very active in securing grants for a number of facilities, and I think perhaps there may be a possibility of either looking directly for funding from music-based organisations um, which would help to provide music support or perhaps to look for funding for other activities which would then release budget for, for the, the necessary music teacher. She was very easy to talk to and I think um, I'm very interested in what she's going to come back with. She, uh, she immediately established that she had a good understanding of the issues. It's a week later and Fiona is back to see Alan and discuss her ideas. If we start in terms of looking at revenue generation, I mean, clearly your biggest area of revenue is the per capita funding per pupil. Uh, and I know that you are pretty well up to capacity, but is there any room for perhaps taking some more pupils on role? There isn't any potential for expanding the, the standard admissions number, mm -hmm. which is quite clearly 52 in the nursery and 60 in each year group. And on the census day in January, which is uh -huh. the crucial day for, for the financing of schools. We do our level best to be as full as we possibly can. I was quite horrified that, uh, in, in terms of utilities, that you just received notification of something like a 53% increase in, I think, the gas bill. So did it, that sort of prompted me to think about um, perhaps engaging the services of a, a company who'd come in and do an audit of all your expenditure on gas, lights, um, heating, water, photocopy use, telecoms use. I think it might be an area worth investigating. Very keen, mm -hmm. uh, very keen. Uh, it seems very easy to implement and yes we've got, to go, we've got to try that one. I wasn't aware of the existence of those companies, that's really helpful. I know that you've used the um, school on a number of occasions as a film location, but that, that's been primarily the film companies approaching you. So I thought maybe that there's room there to be more proactive and perhaps uh, register on a database. A um, number of companies are specialised location finders. And I think um, just from some preliminary inquiries that you can probably raise between 500 and 1,000 pounds a day through using the premises as a, as a film location. Yeah, we quite like that idea mm -hmm. because it's, um, we have earned some money in that way in the past and uh, if, they, if registering can increase that then we'll certainly try that. It will mm. be interesting to see how much we get. Um, there is one slight drawback to that and that is uh, because of the big work we've had in the Keys Teacher mm. Stage 2 playground to turn it into the sports ground from which we hope to earn some money. Yes. Um, unfortunately um, because of the surface, um, big heavy lorries can no longer be parked on it and film crews like to bring big heavy lorries yes. along with them. Yes. And that was the big attraction of our site. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with, with your nursery. I thought it was a fantastic facility and that, that obviously adds tremendous value for, for the local community as well. But it did occur to me that it's probably empty during the summer holidays. Um, and I recognise, obviously, you might need to refurbish and so on, but had you thought of letting that perhaps to one of the, the growing number of private sector nurseries, maybe for use during the summer holidays? The alarm bells ring with mm -hmm. that particular suggestion. 
you know, I, I know my nursery staff will be appalled at the idea of letting all their lovely equipment, le letting somebody else be in charge of it. Uh, I don't want to sound negative, but I think mm -hmm. a lot of teachers w wouldn't want to give out their, to, to have their classrooms used in that way. I wondered whether you had considered perhaps um, when people maybe within teaching assistants moved on rather than replacing them, perhaps uh, seeing if you could engage the services of um, some local committed volunteers. Mm. We have a lot of volunteers working in the school. Ultimately they're not your employees, so if they decide sure. they want to go off for three weeks holiday in the middle of term then they can. So I'm very keen on, on using volunteers, but I don't think it's a satisfactory solution. Looking at, at the budget, there's quite a sizable chunk that's actually allocated for supply. I don't know whether you actually spend all of that, but it did occur to me that there may be some flexibility in um, perhaps either contracting with the individuals directly or perhaps uh, working with the agency to look at maybe a, a discount for a long-term guaranteed uh, regular usage because clearly in the, the agency's interest is knowing that bookings are coming in mm -hmm. and in your interest is the stability of knowing who's coming in to actually work with you. Yeah, I think there's mileage in that one as well because we do, we do use, uh, we do f spend a fair bit on supply because we send a lot of people on courses mm -hmm. um, and we're pr committed to continuing that. Uh, yes, I could have a word with the agency. Mm -hmm. We'd bring them some good business. Looking at a number of other areas and looking at perhaps what's worked in other schools, I'm aware that there have been some quite good developments in terms of relationships with local businesses, either that are perhaps parent-owned or uh, ones which are key to the, to the local area. Tell me a little bit more. Tell you a little bit more. Uh, pain. I, I mean, re really going, going out and perhaps getting involved in, in the sort of networking circuit within your local chamber of commerce. Uh, I recognise this is after hours, but just seeing whether you can get them to come along and, and work with the school. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing does provoke a philosophical reaction on my part. So I had to have a, deserve a work-life balance, and I don't particularly want to go and hobnob with the local um, round table or chamber of commerce or be what it may, trying to get money out of them. I don't like begging anyway, which mm -hmm. is in effect what it is. Sure. Um, and, you know, if they, if they want to, st to enter into a relationship which is to their financial benefit, they can, they can come and ask us. Mm -hmm. Given Alan's reaction, does Fiona think he will be able to find the £30,000 he needs? I think it's going to be challenging for him. But I, I think there are ways of certainly going a long way towards raising that amount of money. And what can other schools do to access expertise like Fiona's? The majority of schools have got excellent resources within their boards of governors. So there may well be somebody there with management experience or financial experience who can guide them. And I'm sure in many cases they are indeed doing so. Um, but of course also there are advisors there that they can talk to either in the private sector or from the local authority. Since meeting Fiona, Alan has registered the school on a film location database. He has begun the process of an energy audit, which along with savings he is making to his staffing costs, mean that next term he will be able to afford a full-time music teacher.